Welcome to the Dubcast with Dubside. This is a special guest edition of the Dubcast. I have an interview I did with Tony Schmitz, who became the new president of Kayak USA in the fall of 2023. And he talks about his start with a canoeing background and why he changed over to kayak. And he lives in Minnesota. He was involved in the start of the traditional Paddlers Gathering Kayak USA event. And I asked him about what new direction he sees Kayak USA going in the future with him in the presidential position. And this interview was recorded at the Delmarva Paddlers Retreat. And back in Dubcast number 51, I went into some detail about the very significant presentation that Paningua Corneliuson did there. And so we, we talk about that a little bit because it was on our minds very much. And then I asked him as the editor of the Masik Kayak USA's newsletter for at least a year or two now. Uh, Some of the better articles that he remembers, as well as a process to go through if you've got an idea to write an article yourself and submit it. So this runs a little bit under half an hour. Well, I'm talking to Tony Schmitz, the new president of Kayak USA. So, Tony... To make this official, I could say, welcome to the Dubcast. But well, and thank you so much for allowing me to be mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. So tell me, tell me, we, we could start with, I, I just, I just want to introduce you to my listeners and, you know, whatever you want to say is fine, but I often ask people, you know, how they started kayaking and various things like that, but, you know, tell me, introduce yourself. Yeah, okay. Um, well, back in uh, the mid-90s, 1990, uh, 1995, earlier than that, I was a canoeist and would go to the Boundary Waters and schlep a canoe around on top of my head. All right. Um, and now you're based out of Minnesota. Right? right. I live in Minnesota, okay. so the Boundary Waters is a you know, hop, skip, and jump, really. Yeah. And everybody goes there. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, it just kind of slowly dawned on me that here I am, I'm sitting on this throne basically is how you feel in a in a canoe um yeah. you're way up high and you just don't have that much feeling for the water mm-hmm. and uh, kayaking wasn't a very big deal in minnesota yeah i mean point. canoes were the, everything that i mean that was that was it for boating. oh yeah canoe you know it's like canada where the canoe was the coin of the realm yeah really. um but i saw people in kayaks and thought you know, this looks smarter to me, um, uh-huh. and um, you're just more in touch with the water. And so uh, yeah. in 19, I don't know, 97, there was some outfitter who was doing you know, your intro to kayak classes, and uh-huh. I convinced a friend of mine from New York, well, why don't you come out here and we'll do this thing, you know? And uh-huh. uh, so I did it, and at the end of the thing thought, I'm going to buy one of your kayaks. <laughs> I need right. this thing. And uh, went at it from there. And then a couple, I don't know, a couple of years passed. And uh, I don't really even know where the idea came from. I, I, it was probably from Sea Kayaker magazine and Chris Cunningham okay. but that you could uh, build a boat. And I come from a family of people who love to build things. Um, you know, right. my mom thinking she needed a shower stall in the basement, got a bunch of concrete blocks and carried them down there and laid the block herself. And that was just, you know, a thing that she did. Um, So I thought, well, yeah, I can build a kayak and uh, use the instructions. And I don't know, maybe they were in Sea Kayak or maybe Cunningham by then had printed his book. But blundered through that in my basement, which in the winter it's 50 degrees and right next to the furnace so god only knows what the carbon monoxide situation was but uh, uh and i could blame some of the mistakes probably on brain poisoning but um you know got a so, so in, in minnesota 
getting on the water pretty much closes down in the winter months because everything's ice. Yeah, you know, November, you're kind of looking at the end of the line, you know, okay. the pool sessions and uh, things like that. Or you can go to the Mississippi, actually, which people, there is an annual paddle on New Year's Day on the Mississippi because it's typically open enough. But, okay. Uh, you know, it's not comfy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, kind of took it from there. Um, what? Tell me to shut up when I'm going on too uh, long. So, so, so <clears throat> we'll fast forward a little bit through some things here, but so, somehow you got connected with the whole Greenland traditional paddling kayak USA yeah, community. Right. Was that pretty early on or did, was it after Yeah, a while? you know, I kind of blundered into a guy I was paddling my skin on frame boat and, uh, you know, in one of the local lakes and uh, a guy passed me by who looked basically like me, an old gray-haired guy and um, said, oh man, that's a skin on frame boat. And I said, yeah. well, yes sir, it is. And uh, he, we, you know, we chatted and he said, well, you know, I know how to do a bunch of rolls. And I didn't know how to roll anything. And so, um, you know, we made a deal, basically. I said, well, I'll help you build a boat, and you teach me how to roll, and we'll be in business. You know, and we and did that and developed a relationship. And uh, I don't know, I got a little bit more involved in the local kayak club and um, did a little proselytizing, I guess, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> where a few people said, oh, it's kind of cool. And... Uh, um, you know, the uh, usage of at least Greenland paddles kind of spread a bit from there in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. So, All right. Yeah. So that, the, the events up there, there's a kayak camp, there's a traditional paddlers gathering. When did you become aware of those? Well, um, I, I helped start it, actually. Um, so that was... Which one? Uh, the traditional paddlers gathering. Yeah, in, okay. Uh, you know, with Joe Hamilton. Yes, and, Joe yeah. Hamilton. Um, yeah. and, and that was uh, whenever it was in the early 2000s, I think. And then for yeah. several years, uh, my friend Michelle Forseth and I, Joe died, and um, yeah. uh, Dave, her husband, you, you know, would attend, but he, he didn't want yeah. to organize yeah. it. Um, I, so, I think I, w I was at the Michigan training camp when the idea of that, and, and I went, it must have been there, 2004, 2005 or something. Oh, and, yeah, and the idea was in the right. air to start yeah. that thing somewhere in that time period. Yeah, yeah, yeah I helped, you know, with the yeah. first years, yeah. and then slowly Michelle and I kind of took it over for a number of years until okay. we found some other people we could unload it on. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Wow. Oh. So that from 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 that beginning, now you find yourself as the president of Kayak USA. Or are you officially now, or are you just uh, about to be? I believe I am it? officially the president right. of Kayak USA. Or nobody's objected so strenuously oh. as to uh, obviate the fact, I guess. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah. Well, I was I was here where at Delmarva Palace Retreat on Sunday. We're about, it's about almost lunchtime, and we're closing out the weekend. But we had, it was Thursday, was it? There was a, a Zoom kind of old board to new board of directors meeting and we heard Greg Stamer talking and, and uh, Vernon Doucette and Dan Siegel and so whoever had that idea I, I thought it was very very well taken to have the old talking to the new and it, and it seemed and the impression I got was the old, the old guard sort of said yeah, well you know you got it now don't, don't get too caught up in all the intricate stuff we did past back then. You, know, you you got it. If you got a new direction, go for it. Is yeah. That... Yeah, that's the impression I came away with, too. I thought yeah. Greg Stamer was really very, uh, you know, insightful and eloquent about saying, you know, basically, well, uh, the past informs the present and the future, but the past is also the past, and you've got to find a direction that is relevant to the moment in time where we exist. And, uh, yeah. you know, I thought it was, you know, very gracious, actually, of him just to, you know, sort of say, well, uh, these are the things we did, and, you know, we're proud of them, but, um, you know, the future is the future, and you've got to determine how that will look. And, yeah. uh, you know, I thought, well, God bless you, man. You know, that is insightful. Mm -hmm. uh, and difficult so, to do, you know. For, yeah, yeah. Well, are, are, are you ready to 
give us any hint of what that future direction would be, or is that still in the <laughs> well, nascent no, stage? Well, you no, know, uh, you know, of course, I'm, you know, I'm the president, but, uh, you know, I bow to the infinite wisdom of the board as a whole, you know, and so yeah, I have my opinions at the moment, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I can't say, and it will be so, you know, it has right. to be a, you know, group decision and something we think we can, you know, sell to the yeah. general membership. But yeah, I mean, I think especially coming out of this weekend and the conversation that was, I thought was really profound with uh, Panikok. Yeah, uh, I, I could do a whole episode of that. I, 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 it's hard to, hard to cover. That we, yeah, we had a heavy weekend here with some yeah. very, very, very meaningful connections to, to the Inuit tradition directly from somebody. Well, I think the takeaway on that additionally, you know, to get back to the question you asked, uh, I was talking to her later just separately, mm -hmm. but she got to this, you know, in the larger meeting we were having and said, well, she had really never sat on a kayak before yeah. and that, you know, she got into it and got into the, the kayak and um, explained later to me, well, you know, for you, this is a recreational object. You know, it's like, you know, kind of a, you know, if you, depending on how you look at it, it's kind of like a hula hoop or a bike or something. You know, but for me, to sit in that kayak was profound and emotional and, yeah. um, you know, linking me back to the, you know, reality of life in, Mm. for the Inuit people and it's just something way, way, way different and mm. it seems to me that one of the tasks of the board is to help people recognize what those differences are you know, yeah. to, to be able to see well, the way we see the world is different um, or can be you know, way mm. different from the way Inuit people will see both the world and the traditions of kayaking. And, yeah. um, you know, to move that to a place where, you know, I think people want to be respectful and they want to not insult, you know, the people who come here or, yeah. um, you know, the people who might hear about our doings. Um, yeah. But I found what she was saying um, revelatory and oh, yeah. I, you know and I've tried to be sensitive and I think one of the things we can do is promote that idea that there are really big differences that we should be aware of and you know, it's not like we're going to become Greenlanders but we can do what we do within a context that is you know honors the traditions really um, so that's you know, and then there are some other little things. We need to clean up the website. We need to uh, okay. figure out who's on the advisory board. You know, just housekeeping, basically. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. And so, a big part of what Kayak has been doing, and I imagine will continue to do, is these, these events such as Delmarva. Is that? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you, <laughs> by and large, my uh, perception is the events pretty much run themselves, that uh, Kayak mm -hmm. USA can contribute to them to help them cover expenses that might be exceptional, you know, such, such as bringing people from Greenland here. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's, uh, unless, I can't even really imagine what the circumstance would be, but we thought we had a Kayak USA sanctioned event where they were doing something that really just seemed egregious. but. I can't even okay. I can't even imagine what that would be, you know. So, um, you know, I think it's more a question of saying, uh, "Bless you, you're running this event. I know it's a huge amount of work. If there are some things we can do to be helpful to you, we would be happy to do that." But you know, it's yeah. kind of we need to create right. a context for that. Yeah. Well, I've always seen that the interaction, direct interaction with people either going to Greenland or coming from Greenland to here has always been beneficial when we get the yeah. direct link. Yeah, no, I believe the same thing would be true. And I think, um, again, just getting back to this idea of trying to promote a, you know, cultural understanding. Well, if there's no connection, it's kind of hard to have any kind of understanding. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, it, 
after this, the, this, the big uh, bump in the road with COVID, we're, well, we're trying yeah. to get smooth yeah. out after that. I'm, I'm still get, waiting to get back to, to Greenland. I haven't yeah. been there yet, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what that Well, we there. hope you go there soon. You all know. right, all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you'd like to... Uh... No, well... You know, it was a pleasure to be here. I'd never been to Delmarva. It's a little, little bit like going to Mecca, I guess. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, you know, there's that. Um, had the pleasure of meeting a lot of people whose names I had heard over 20 years. But, you know, like uh, Peter Strand, the elder, um, you know, okay. I had really saw posts from him on the forum for years. Um, yeah. He's like so many of the people here, deeply knowledgeable about certain things. And so it was a pleasure talking to him, yeah. um, you know, seeing just some of the beautiful items that were on the auction table that by dark or Ikyak saw. Ikyak, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it was just a pleasure to see those things. It was like going to a candy shop in a way. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm very, very happy to have been here and, uh, to meet the people I met and hope that those are ongoing relationships where they can contribute something yeah. in addition to the club. Or you, you've been the editor of the Masik newsletter. True. Does enough. that continue, or now that you're president, you hand it off to somebody else, or how does that work? Oh, I'll probably continue to do it. You know, I, um, I've worked in journalism since I was 20 years old, and that's mm -hmm. how I made my living, and it's probably easier for me to do it than most other people. But if somebody showed up and said, uh, how about if you let me do it? I'd say, I, <laughs> you're on board, pal. You know, right. uh, let me just um, send you a file or two and you can use right. what you can use. I'm not thinking I must do it forever. I, you know, I get some laughs out of it. But So, uh, so the Masik, it's, it's the, the newsletter of COC USA. Right. And, and tell me, you don't have to be a member to, to get it? Like, you can go online and just read it, or how does that work? Yeah, it had been locked up, where you had to be a member to get okay. it. And I just thought, well, what are we after here? You know, do we want the greatest number of people possible to read it, or do we want to have it be a membership benefit, and, um, you know, you get a coffee cup and access to the Masique or something? Right. And it just seemed to me... Having worked in journalism for so long, I have a little bit of the impulse that information wants to be free and right. um, that we could more effectively promote our interests by showing people, here are a bunch of people who are really deeply interested in this stuff. They know, members know some stuff. They are yeah. willing to allow other people to see it and broaden their understanding. And to me, that was just more valuable. Right. Um, so, so you were the person who decided that to, to no, make it a free I thing? No, I was... kind of argued that it should be true, but um, okay. I, I was on the board at that point, but I don't think I was, again, oh. in a position okay. to say... It but you, you were so. around when that idea came yeah, up. Yeah, and, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, so that everybody knows how to... So, so to read the Masik newsletter, one needs to go to, was it, kayakusa.com? Org. Org. So yeah. Q A J A Q U S A dot O R G. Yeah. And then on, once you're there, how do you get to the muscle? Uh, you scroll down a little bit. I'm trying to remember, but it's pretty easy to find. Masik is M A S I K. Exactly. Right? Okay. And um, I think, again, this is an issue that needs to be straightened out. That, and I might be wrong about this, but you can right. get the current issue. But there are an immense number of back issues. Yeah. And uh, I might just have been looking at the wrong place, but it is a, a deep and rich treasure trove of information. Yeah. So and on the website, if you dig far enough, you can get to every issue? I, I believe some, so. Okay. I need to check that again because, uh, right. uh, you know. So if you could just give us, in, in the, the time you've been doing it or any of your recollections of it, some of the highlight articles. And oh. you don't have to talk about mine, but... <laughs> <laughs> Although I will, actually. Dubside has been a, a faithful 
reliable, on-time contributor who, um, I, you got to take this from the editor's perspective, but who delivers clean copy where, um, unless you've done it, you don't appreciate that for what it is. But, uh, so for instance, um, Dubside did a wonderful piece that was, and this is exactly up the right alley for me, um, a wonderful piece on uh, music, Greenla music of Greenland, uh, contemporary music of Greenland, and a long list of, uh, um, and description of what kind of music they, it is. And mm -hmm. it gets you into, uh, you know, again, just a different place rather than this is how you roll or this is how you make a paddle or this is, you know, the just artifacts of it and more into the, um, yeah, yeah. well, spirituality isn't exactly the right word, but, um, you know, music is, it's just a different thing and it gets you to a different place and a different level of understanding if you're open to hear what's going on. And, uh, you know, so I, that's among the pieces where I think, oh, wow, we scored on that one. Uh, another, just to my mind, excellent piece was um, a guy in Greenland, John Peterson, who wrote a story that started out being about the rules for competition regarding what a kayak must look like and what features it must have to be allowed in the competition. Uh, but then he segues into this thing, and this is what makes it just a fascinating and excellent piece, I think, is um, he goes up to Thule in the far north of Greenland and goes out narwhal hunting in skin-on-frame boats with some pals of his. And now he's description, describing the kayaks they're using. And they are the ugliest kayaks you're ever going to see in your life. You know, they're just slathered with roofing cement and tied together with, you know, uh, I, you know just odds and ends. If a uh, rib breaks, they replace it with a piece of plastic bucket. And um, you look at it and you think, well, these are not guys who are you know, concerned about, are there seven deck lines going across, or, you know, whatever the number of deck lines, you know, you need for the competitions. These are guys who are just thinking, I got to go out there and kill some stuff. And, um, and, and what they're doing is hunting animals that could kill you in a heartbeat. Um, and it was just such a you know, fascinating juxtaposition. I read it and thought, ha you know, the New Yorker would be lucky to have this piece. Um, mm. it, you know, New Yorker magazine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just excellent. And, um, I'm after him all the time saying, John, John, we need another piece. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, he's had some, there have been some health issues in his family and it hasn't worked out, but I am just desperate to get that guy back in there because he's a great writer and just, you know, a, a deep thinker really. So, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that, yeah. and we try to have some short stuff that, you know, you can read in two minutes yeah. and, and if, you, if, you're, if you're deep into the kayak and stuff, there are articles about making kayaks and built oh, yeah. carving paddles and roll techniques. And yeah, uh, Fred Randall, uh, an expert, very respected builder, has had yeah. this ongoing series of uh, you know how to build a replica. That I got to say, it's it's really excellent. Um, where you know the photos are accompanied by the text, you know, immediately adjacent, and he does it in a way where uh, this stuff is always complicated, but if you read it carefully, you know how to do it. Um, yeah. He's really done a great job. And there's, there's a lot of, yeah, I'm forgetting people, but uh, yeah. you know, similarly, Dan Siegel has written a bunch of stuff that's great. Um, uh, you know, I'm really indebted to people who have uh, not just said, well, you write it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other, any topics you'd like to see in the future? Well, I think, um, you know, part of it is seeing what stumbles down the road. But, uh, you know, I think the more that we can hit these, you know, find a way to hit the cultural notes that explain you know, some of the differences between how you and I might look at the world and how 
generally speaking, you know, Inuit people in Greenland might see it differently and how to you know, account respectfully for those dis differences. Yeah. Uh, you know, those are things that will be on my mind that I'll be looking for, so yeah. yeah. Right. And I, I guess we should say here, if anybody has ideas and wants to write an article, how do they contact you? Um, it is, I believe, at, here, let me just say what my email address is, which right. I know for sure. It's uh, A as in Anthony, P as in Paul, B as in Bartholomew, S C H M I T Z at gmail.com. And I'd be happy to get your thoughts. So. All right. Well, thank you. It's just about lunchtime here at Del Marvel on a yeah. Sunday. We're going to hear the bell ring in a minute. Uh, so, yeah. 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 Well, thank you for so, the opportunity. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. And I'm encouraged to see a, a new president ready to take the reins and lead us forward. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, again, thank you. So. All right. Thanks. And that is Tony Schmitz interviewed. October of 2023 at the Delmarva Pathers Retreat. And if you'd like to read any of the issues of the Masik he's talking about, you can go to kayakusa.org. That's Q-A-J-A-Q-U-S-A dot O-R-G. And on the homepage, you can see how to find the Masik, M-A-S-I-K, Masik newsletter, Click over to that and read to your heart's content.